Welcome everybody back to Raven Maven for another episode. This is actually episode 29 and I'm very excited to introduce my guest today. Um, her name is Tatiana Ilya and I'm going to let her further introduce herself. So Tatiana, if you will. Thank you so much. Hey everyone, my name is Tatiana Ilya. I'm a jewelry and accessory designer based out of New York. I also do creative direction work, creative curation, event curation. Um, me and my friends do a lot of great events like around the city. I mean, that's prior to COVID and <laughs> now everything is virtual. So we do have some virtual stuff that we've done as well too. But yeah, like I'm all around creative and I do a lot of things in that space. And then I also work full-time as a tax consultant with the IRS. So like that's my full-time thing and then I balance my creative ventures my jewelry and accessory line as well to um, when I'm not working so I'm I'm in a little a few different areas here like I dip and dabble in different fields but um, I'm excited for today I'm excited for the conversation and thank you so much for joining us sorry about that guys just dropped my charger <laughs> but <thank you. laughs> it's all good <laughs> so um thank you so much Thank you so much. Uh, one moment, guys, because I need to <laughs> pull the charger off the floor. <laughs> so thank you so much, Tatiana, for that introduction and just talking about some of the other things you do. And also, you know, I love having entrepreneurs on the show that um, have nine to fives as well, like myself. This is like uh, my side hustle that I started in 2017. So I'm still going, still trying to scale up. So it's good to have another one, another person like myself, um, striving to, you know, just build our business and our empires, right? Definitely, definitely. And shout out to you, going strong, three years. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you. So um, I'm going to start from the beginning. I want to um, just talk about, you know, your background, um, basically how and when you started your business and what like was the inspiration for that. So I started my jewelry and accessory line back in 2011, which sounds so crazy because it was so long ago. Um, but yeah, I was in college at the time. I was going to SUNY Westbury. Um, I was working at the IRS as an intern. That's how I started working there. So actually, <laughs> this past week was my 11th year there, which is so crazy to, to even think about. Happy um, anniversary. Long... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, yeah, so I was interning at the IRS and I was going to Studio Westbury and I was always creating and making stuff. Me and my friends had an online magazine in high school and I was kind of in a space where I'm like, okay, like what's my new thing? Like what's going to be my new project? Like, am I going to go into fashion design and do clothes or lifestyle wear or am I going to do something different? And I knew a lot of people that were doing like lifestyle wear type clothing lines and I wanted to go against the grain and go into something that no one I knew was doing. And so that's how I got into to jewelry and I've always loved jewelry like my mom my grandmother they will always have their beautiful jewelry the gold earrings necklace rings you know like that whole it's like a whole vibe in itself and so I was always into accessories when I was in high school I used to layer on a whole bunch of like costume jewelry and stuff just to like spice up my outfit like add a little razzle dazzle to it and so from doing that, I started just experimenting, making one-on-one -on -one pieces and showing them to my friends. And people were like, wow, I really like this. And they started purchasing items. And that's when it really clicked, like, oh, okay, like I can make this into a business and I actually like have a talent. Like people actually like it. Like I knew I liked it, but I wanted to also appeal to the people that I knew because I trusted their style and like their creative eye and stuff. And so fast forward later, I just started doing different types of pop-up shop events in New York and Brooklyn, Long Island. Um, I started doing e-commerce. I built my website and so I was able to sell my pieces online and then I was doing a mixture of online sales and pop-up shop events. And that was kind of the way that people would be able to catch me. And um, through having my line and building connections with other creatives in New York, I started getting into modeling and I started doing creative direction for photo shoots and like just coming up with ideas and concepts and shooting them with my friends and people that I knew and collaborating with other artists. And then we started just trying to create 
create our own platforms where we can showcase ourselves and our friends and what they do. And so then we started doing events like parties, networking events, um, panel discussions, showcase events, and so many different people like Driven Society, um, Diomara, Dot Cromwell, like a bunch of Trav, like a bunch of my friends that are doing such great things. We've collaborated so much on so many different things. Um, and then like later on in the years, we started like collaborating with more music artists as well too. And so like I got to work with Jadena and his camp on a few different things as well too. And that was an eye opener for me as well too, because I was able to learn from other creatives in their respective fields. And so for me, I just love the creative world. I love to create. I love expression. I love art. And so that's just been my passion. But um, I've also had certain responsibilities when it comes to my personal life and my day-to-day -day life and family life where I couldn't just leave my job at the IRS and put everything on my line because it wasn't generating the amount of income that I needed, like if I was being re realistic with myself. And also I have an old school Haitian Caribbean mom. So she's <laughs> like, um, you think that that's a job <laughs> like you think that's a lucrative career <laughs> you'd be stupid if you drop your job right now like what are you gonna do and it's like you know i know she means well by it but she's like a true like she's a capricorn she's about her business like she came it's from a West Indian thing. yeah like she came from Haiti. <laughs> she had to create a life for her own out here as a young mother like and so she's just like okay i get where you're coming from but you need to be realistic Right. And so it really just conditioned me to balance out like the creative side of myself and also the business side of myself and like what I've been able to learn from the IRS about like just taxes as a creative, as an entrepreneur and like just being able to better manage my money and like saving and, you know, investing into your retirement fund, like things like that, where I wasn't really being exposed to um, in like my day to day. Right. So it created a great balance. Like now, like I used to have moments of like, oh my God, I can't do this. Or why am I doing this? Or why am I working at the IRS? Or maybe I shouldn't be a creative. But now I just feel like everything is coming into alignment. And just seeing so many people work full time, have their family, have their life, have their brand, have their companies, have multiple companies. It just shows how capable people really are of making whatever that they want to manifest happen. Correct. Like we're all multifaceted and we get to embrace that instead of saying, oh, you just have to do one thing. Like, you know, so that's my whole spiel. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny. I'm looking at my talking points and I'm like, so Tatiana just pretty much went through most of the talking points. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I told her that you go. <laughs> it's all good. Um, I really do enjoy when, um, you know, I have guests like you that just are so in tune with their self and, you know, the process of, of how long it took them to get to where they are. And like now, I totally agree with you as far as myself also identifying as a creative where, you know, things are now starting more to align and, you know, you have a vision or you have a concept and it turns into something else. And, you know, just almost like it's a never ending self editing. That's kind of like how I look at it. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So Definitely. I wanted to to get back, like pull back a little bit and talk more about um, the fact that for you, especially what you've been doing, especially with all the collaboration with other creatives and brands, your jewelry, you always say it's like more than just jewelry. And like, mm -hmm. that's to me the unique positioning of your brand. So um, what do you feel also makes your jewelry line stand out a little bit more? I really believe that what makes my jewelry line stand out is the fact that my pieces carry energy. Like, I really believe that, like, especially the gemstone pieces. And, like, I used to only think that it was the gemstone pieces that carried energy because if you do research on gemstones, you know, all different stones carry different types of energy. They help to balance you out. Um, and that's, that's a fact. 
And I know that gold, there's been mixed conversations of if they carry energy or not. But speaking from people that I know that are even my close friends, and they'll tell me like on a day to day basis, like even my gold pieces carry energy. They said, I feel different. Like I feel protected when I wear this piece. I feel grounded when I wear this piece. Like I feel good about myself when I wear this piece. And I'm like, wow, like it's not just something that looks nice. It's just like, oh, it's not just like, oh, a nice bracelet. It's like it actually carries energy. And I and I personally do a lot of work on myself just to balance out my energy um, and ground myself and making sure that I'm trying to operate like at my highest self and giving off like the energy that I would like to receive as well, too. And when I'm making my pieces and when I finish, I sage them. Wow. And so I cleanse the energy, especially in the gemstones, so that before I send it off, like the energy that's being given to this person is like pure, it's clear, where like energy is a come and go thing. So it's like, let's say someone made a piece with malice, like this piece may like make you feel bad and you may not realize like, why am I feeling this way? But it's like, it's the energy that this person put on you. Right. So and I like where, you, where you're going with that and, you know, it's funny because, and sorry to cut you off, but, oh, but I know that you talked about your whole, let's pivot a little bit to social, social causes. And you worked with uh, the Breathe With Me and Joyous Leader in Sky Schools, mm -hmm. and um, which seems to be a lot more about energy work. So do you want to uh, also just explain how you got really into um to energy work and incorporate it into your jewelry and then how that also then led you to working with that organization? Yeah, definitely. So for me, the ener like understanding energy, understanding healing work, understanding gemstones, under understanding meditation, all these different things, it wasn't until I started to practice it on myself that I really was able to understand it. And so for me, I had certain things that I dealt with growing up within like my own home and just like my personal life and family life where like it created trauma for me and it created like an imbalance in my emotions and you know I didn't understand later on until like I understood like what depression was or what mental illness was and understanding like okay like Yes, I went through something, but also the person who was inflicting this pain on me was going through something too. And so I had to understand that breakdown and like just mental health and everything that comes with it. And from understanding that, and even I did um, a program called Momentum Education. If you go to Momentum Education on Instagram or online on their website, you'll find a bunch of information on their programs. They're really awesome. They have different workshops that you do that assist with personal and professional development. And it goes through like your ways of being, how you're showing up in life, the things that you went through, how it shaped you to be who you are, but then also taking ownership and authorship and controlling the narrative over your own life now that we've had this new perspective and like just being able to understand the breakdown of that and what that here healing process looks like, right. um, but then also understanding healing on an energetic level, because even if we figure out what's going on on the surface, like we need to heal ourselves internally as well too. And so from doing that, I started learning about gemstones and healing energy and sage and Palo Santo and the chakras. And I just, I started to learn and even I'm still learning. There's still so much that I don't know. I have like books on energy healing and sound healing right now. That's just like, I got to read it. <laughs> like I got to just go in hibernation and read all these books, but I'm continuing to learn because I see that it's helped me. Right. And so from seeing that, how much it's helped me, how much it's allowed me to release what's no longer serving me. It, it's been able to allow me to like embrace like my new blessings. And I'm like really grateful for where I'm at right now. Um, and where I'm going. And so I just like want to share that with people. And so that's why I have my gemstone pieces. That's why my friends will talk about stuff. And we talk about these things and like we share these things. Like my friends will listen to healing frequencies sometimes and it will help them. Or, you know, some people are still like skeptical about it and that's okay. But I always just say, try it out and see, just see how you feel. And even with Breathe With Me, that happened because my sister is also into healing work. My sister, her brand is Joyce Leader. Her name is Joanne Ligonde. 
And so she partnered up with Sky Schools and they partnered with other organizations like AKA, uh, NAACP, other community-based organizations so that we could share this with the people that we know within our communities. And I partnered with them as well too. And so with Sky Schools, they offered free breathing meditation courses. It's a three-day course for the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And they also offer free one-hour meditations and they've been offering it since June. We've had this since June. They actually are having something today on the 28th it's today tomorrow and sunday and then they have another one in september at the end of september so i also have information on that on my website so you know i'm sure my information is going to be at the end of this and stuff so you guys can check on my website um check on my instagram you'll see information about it the link is still there if you or anyone that you know might be interested in that but i guarantee when it comes to just breathe breath work, breathing, controlling your breath, inhale, exhale, even if you do it three times, it just calms you down. It's like brings you back to yourself. And it's and so funny how like you were able to connect that also with, you know, your passion and, and your craft for creating pieces and knowing that pieces go on bodies and again, understanding that energy. And I know it sounds super crunchy to some people, and a lot of people are ignorant to the concept of energy work, but I feel like it's really becoming more, there's a lot more awareness becoming of it. I feel like Janae Aiko really talks about it a lot. Her. Her, yeah, and her as a creative and her content and her music and her, just her whole image, you can, she just seems like a very peaceful person. Like just the whole, tra I've watched yeah. her transition. So I'm really excited to see other women of color just talking about that and we know especially in the black community we need a lot of healing there's a lot of trauma in our community so i'm excited to see there's people educating our people on how on the alternatives on the other ways that we can heal ourselves mm -hmm. definitely and even like janae aiko i've been following her for years me too <laughs> and and it's like she speaks about a lot of what she's gone through Yep. in her personal life and like understanding like family situations where there's a lot of friction it becomes really difficult because it's like you love them that's your family but then like you're also being caused pain same thing with like relationships like intimate relationships right and so her being so vulnerable and sharing that and then sharing her healing journey and then listening and like that's how I got into singing bowls and healing frequencies. Cause I'm like, this sound is making me feel better. Like this sound is releasing whatever tension I was like bottling up and carrying, like I'm releasing it. And for I'm me, glad you like, say that I, too, because people need to be more aware about the um, low vibration music and yeah. like learning more about that. And I know we didn't get on here to talk about all about energy. Oh, but listen, you guys. So serious. <laughs> stuff is still important <laughs> it's true because we have to be pay attention because what's happening is like people are feeling a way like sometimes our people are depressed or mm -hmm. they're angry and they don't understand why yeah and, and these things help you to understand why and once you acknowledge it now you can work on healing it and releasing it whatever it is that you need to release sometimes we hold on to things like I would internalize things so much wow. and I had to learn how to let it go and then I would like I wouldn't cry like I would cry when I like I'm at my wits end but I'm not really a crier so I'm like holding everything in and so I had to learn ways to release so I'm not so like tense you know what I mean yeah totally so very important and we have individual trauma we have generational trauma we have ancestral trauma PTSD going on right now today was the anniversary of the March on Washington and you see we're still fighting for a lot of the same things that we should have gotten a long time ago which is just common decency common respect for another life another human being it's just like it's a lot yeah. and we are internalizing it regardless of if we acknowledge it or not because it affects us you know yeah totally and thank you for commenting on that because i was just in in the in the office here yelling at my friend about like you know i was just so frustrated with the whole march i have my own personal opinions and how mm -hmm. I, I'm, I personally am over marching mm -hmm. and i'm over us doing the same things over and over again expecting a different result mm -hmm. so that's another conversation <laughs> Yeah, I understand both sides to it. It's, yeah. It's hard. Totally. 
Yeah, it's totally hard. But um, while we're talking about social causes, I also want to talk about um, your other organization, Wonder Woman, and your also your recent partnership with Enrich Media, where you created this bracelet that I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm wearing it here. Yeah, about yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. And um, part of the proceeds from this bracelet is um, going to be donated to the color of change, but it's also to signify um, Blacks in advertising and media. So, you know, you guys should totally go get that on Tatiana's website, which we will drop the link. And, um, you know, just show some camaraderie. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So I try to do just different collaborations and stuff with different organizations. Um, before I get into that, I'll touch upon Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. And so Wonder Woman is a woman empowerment organization that was created by myself and my the co-founder, Diomara. And so she's an amazing singer. She's a businesswoman. She's a boss. And so we've been able to come together and put on different events. We've done a few virtual events as well, too. But we've done a lot of events prior to COVID um, just to create like a space for a woman to celebrate them, to acknowledge them, mainly in like business, entrepreneurship. Um, music. I need to um, go to one of these. Fashion, <laughs> like, yeah, like health and wellness. Um, we just doing like different things to celebrate women that are doing their thing and also creating a space for people to connect and network with each other. We've also done a few different parties as well, too, just as like a fun way to bring people together. And we've collaborated on some events as well, too. Um, so yeah, like we do that. And then we also will have a nonprofit aspect to the event. So we'll have this event and say, okay, like donations will be collected for Black, Ma Black Mamas Matter or um, Iris House or different nonprofits where they're catering to women, uh, homeless women, women that are suffering from different illnesses, just different causes and stuff like that. And so that's what we've been doing with with Wonder Woman, which is really fun. And um, with really important. So thank you for that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like, it's a lot when you're balancing so many different things, but we really just try to give back whenever the opportunity presents itself and just like creating a platform for us to come together. Um, and then with InReach Media, uh, Kariz, who's the founder of InReach Media, she came to me with the idea like, you know, I really want to do something for Black individuals that are in the media and advertising space, like they're so undervalued. And we were just having a whole like two hour long conversation about all that stuff, because it's a lot like as a as a Black person and as a Black woman, there's a lot of things that we see and we're often overlooked That's and right. underpaid. And it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That pay gap is serious, guys. <laughs> yeah, like, it's just really crazy. So um, she came to me with the idea. And I was like, okay, let me whip something up, something that can, like, help us that's, like, cool, clean, simple, but, like, still make a statement. And then we'll donate 50% of the proceeds to Color of Change. Yeah. And so we've had this going on for about a month and a half, almost two months now. And we've raised like over $350. I know I have some, I have to do a calculation for this month, but last month we donated like over 300. So yeah, like it's been really cool to just show our contribution to some capacity. You know what I mean? We're small companies. And so it was nice to just see our networks come together and support. And we're able to donate to a bigger organization that's really helping us move forward. Because the issue with, everything that's going on with the injustices, the racial injustices, it's the fact that we've been dealing with this for so long and the issues are so deep rooted yeah. that we need big organizations to come together and back us. Yeah. And America cares about money. So it's like, they want to see like, you know, who's really going to make the moves so that we could shift this needle. Right. Um, so it was really great just having that initiative and just incorporating the gemstones as well too was really important to both of us because the gemstones also carry energy. So the black beads are black onyx beads, which is really good for protection, releasing fear and anxiety, grounding your energy, protecting your energy, and helping you to push through any negative circumstances. And I think a lot of us have our own individual stuff that we've been going through. So like it can just help to balance the ground off your energy 
energy. And then the magenta bead is a dyed tiger eye bead. So it's a tiger eye gemstone, but it's dyed in the color magenta to give it the pink, which also matches the Enriched Media logo. Right. And we incorporated that as just another subtle added protection because tiger eye is also good for protection as well too. So that was like the design that we came up with. And it's really nice to see so many people showing support and we're just able to give back, you know. I think that's awesome. I'm so excited. I love it. I thought okay. when, when yeah. she showed it to me, I was like, I'm so good at that. <laughs> but um, I think it's, you know, what really gets me excited and like, you know, Raven Maven, we're all about, you know, sharing our stories, right? And mm -hmm. um, showing our people that you can do this. You could be a jewelry designer and run your own business and you could collaborate with other creatives in your community and make an impact. And mm -hmm. um, that's what gets me so excited about the work you've done with, with Ilya by Tatiana Ilya is that you have collab, you've used collaboration as a power tool to really get things done. And I think that's a good lesson to, um, to really just, show everyone that if you we just really pull together put whatever aside and find like-minded people we can like move mountains we could build our communities we can have the coffee shops and eat outside and 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 we don't have to wait for gentrification to make our community better you know what i'm saying 100%. so thank you for doing the work sis <laughs> thank you I'm still learning I'm still growing I'm still evolving you know but I just try to like see who's around me and see ways that we can collaborate and help each other win and figure out a win-win and as you continue to get in that mentality like the universe honestly blesses you because some people that I met it's literally by the grace of God I met them by the grace of God we've been able to collaborate and create things together and so it's really awesome when you're able to just have a great network of such talented amazing people that you really appreciate and you see their light as well too and I know all of us I'm sure in our circles we have people that support us and that are doing their thing and it's just like yeah you want to like network up but network around you as well too exactly. and I've, I've heard that before too I believe Issa Rae said that so that's a really important thing especially during these times yeah and thank you for saying that and just you know we re reiterating we're basically aligned and on the same page when it comes to that I'm totally yeah. for that and um, as we uh, get to wrap here, I wanted to just ask you, what advice would you give for those who are um, launching their own business? Something that you really want, that, that message that you think will really resonate with that individual out there? Okay. Um, I have a few, <laughs> a few different drop them, drop them gems. <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely. If you're looking to launch your business, go for it. Just do it. Do right. it. That's the first thing. Do it. Once you got the ball rolling, then continue to find ways to enhance it, ways to get better. But also trust that process. Understand that everything is not going to happen overnight. Understand that it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's right. a journey. And enjoy that journey and enjoy your growth process and find ways to evolve and like take feedback, you know, don't like no, no ego, like take that away, even if it's hard sometimes and just take the feedback and see how you can apply it. If you can't apply it now, see how you can apply it later on and trust your own intuition, trust the gifts that God has bestowed upon you and trust that and tap into that more because that's, what's going to help you like in the long term, you know what I mean? Because if it's something that you say you want to do, you're going to do it regardless. And appreciate those people that have been supporting you from when you started as well, too. And and like we said before, like network around you. If you have your business, you need to get your e-commerce going, find someone who does e-commerce. Or now people can do it on their own on Squarespace. Yeah. Like I remember when I was doing mine, it was HTML coding. I had to ask my friend who knew coding. It wasn't so easy when I first, first started, right. but now we have so many different resources, online resources. There are no excuses. Exactly. So tap into that, use those resources, hit up your friends, 
if you have a certain budget to work with set aside whatever your budget is work with them i'm sure they'll work with you you have photographers get your product shots going you can learn photography too learn photoshop learn what you can outsource what you can and just do it and as you set those tasks and you accomplish those small goals you'll see how those small goals turn into bigger goals and just know that it's a process like i'm still figuring it out you know there's still so much more that i am looking to do but like as i'm learning i'm just sharing you know from what i've experienced as well too and i'm applying it as well and good luck and enjoy like just have fun with it because that's like you know I think those are all good points and I'm glad that you gave us more than one (laughs) yeah "Ah." Yeah, it's all good and um where can everyone find you on social and um of course we'll drop the link to your website in the description but um I would love for you to share that as well yeah definitely so on Instagram my personal Instagram is underscore I-L-I-A, so that's underscore Ilya. And then my jewelry page, because I ended up doing a jewelry page later on just to like tailor things a little bit more. And so my jewelry page is Jewelry by Ilya. So Jewelry by I-L-I-A. And then my website is www.tatianailia.com. Woohoo! And guys, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say thank you for, you know, joining us today. I really, really appreciate it. And um, this episode is going to be dropping on Monday. I'm not waiting. I'm going to plow through this edit this weekend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, you can, of course, follow Raven Maven Show on Instagram and also on Facebook. Again, it's at Raven Maven Show. And you can also visit us online at ravenmavenshow.com. And make sure, you know, go ahead and, you know, become a member of our site because you get, like, easy access and early access to when we drop new content. And I also want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure you like and share our videos because that will help us to grow. So again, thank you. And till next time, right guys? Thank you so much.